Operation Overlord was, and still is, the largest amphibious assault in human history. As we have learned, it was through the crucial victory at Normandy, as well as subsequent operations that led to the surrender of the Germans. It is without a doubt that in preparation for the assault, Allied commanders ensured that newer and more up-to-date equipment was issued to the troops. This was the case for both the Americans as well as British and Commonwealth forces, whether it be a more updated helmet, lighter and improved firearms, or newer uniforms, the Allied forces were going all out to liberate France. It was to be the first crucial step before they can advance into Germany. So in today's video, we're taking a look at a figurine that I believe quite accurately depicts the loadout of the American General Infantry on D-Day. The figurine in question is King & Country's DD-128 Standing BAR Gunner. The set is a part of the D-Day 44 Americans collection. The miniature was released back in May of 2010 and was retired two years later in May of 2012. The BAR Gunner stands at around 6 cm tall or at around 2.5 inches. Much like the rest of King & Country's releases, the figure is scaled at 1 ratio 30. His uniform consists of the M1937 wool trousers and the M1941 field jacket. I would assume that under his jacket, he's wearing the M37 wool shirt, which was the preferred uniform of choice for temperate climates. On his shoulders, we can see an upwards pointing chevron, which represents the rank of a private first class of the United States Army during World War II. Today, however, the same insignia is that of a private in the US Army. We can also see the titular Ranger Diamond patch on his left shoulder, which means that his outfit is either the 2nd or 5th Ranger Battalions. This GI comes equipped with the D-Day Assault Vest, which was an experimental piece of equipment for Operation Overlord. The vest was designed to be a more effective option for soldiers to store their field equipment. However, it was not adopted after D-Day due to its bulky nature. Soldiers who used it felt that it failed to distribute the weight of equipment effectively. Furthermore, Users reported that the vest also restricted their movement. Wrapped around his waist is the M1942 BAR ammo belt in olive drab. The belt comes with six magazine pouches. BAR gunners would sometimes also carry the M1937 bandolier for more ammo. Above the ammo belt is the M1926 life belt, which is an inflatable personal flotation device issued on D-Day. It was to be inflated if they fell into deep waters so that their heavy equipment wouldn't pull them down. If you remember my other video showing DD-129 standing medic, you would remember that I mentioned how the right way to wear it would be to have it nested right below the armpits. Unlike the medic, the soldier is wearing the life belt correctly, and if he were to inflate it, he won't be finding himself flipped upside down. Above that is another unique equipment to D-Day, and that is the rubberized M7 gas mask bag holding the newly improved M5 gas mask. The gas masks issued for D-Day had to be effective, easy to use, lightweight, and waterproof. Following these criteria, it was redesigned and issued with the rubberized bag. It was designed to be carried below the soldier's chin and on his chest, so that it can be easily accessed. How on his back is the M1943 entrenching tool? It folds out fully into a shovel to dig foxholes and trenches, but it can also be fixed at a 90 degree angle, allowing it to be used as a pick. It is a more compact and effective tool than its predecessor, the M1910 shovel, as it has more functions and it is also lighter. On his lower left back, we can see the M1910 canteen with its pouch. Next to that is a messenger bag of some sort. It looks like a cross between the M1936 musette bag and an M1938 map case. I am not particularly sure what this satchel is, but if I were to make a guess, it may be used by this soldier as a means to carry maintenance equipment for his rifle. However, if you do know what it is, do leave a comment down below. As for his footwear, he is wearing a pair of army-issued rough-out boots, which are low-cut boots made of suede leather. Wrapped around his boots are the M1938 leggings made out of canvas. It served as a height extension for their boots, allowing the soldiers to blouse their trousers. This was to prevent dirt, silt, and insects from entering the user's boots. Atop his head, the BAR gunner is wearing the M1 helmet with a net over the steel pot. The net was used for several reasons. It was sometimes used to strap individual first aid kits onto it for easy access. However, the main reason was for concealment. The net helped to prevent the helmets from reflecting and shining when they were wet. 
Soldiers could also run burlap scrim through it for additional camouflage. And finally, we reached my favorite part of the review, his rifle. The BAR gunner is equipped with, well, the BAR, which is short for the Browning Automatic Rifle. It was the Americans' answer to the British Bren and the German Spalchimegagewehr 42. I am pretty sure I butchered that pronunciation. The BAR functioned as a squad's automatic weapon and was commonly used to suppress the enemy. Due to a smaller magazine capacity, the United States Army and Marine Corps assigned two BAR fire teams per squad. One team would provide covering fire until their magazine is empty, whereupon the second team would open fire while the first team reloaded. In general, this figurine is well detailed and painted in my opinion. The patches and insignia are clear, and we can easily identify the equipment the miniature is carrying. The added weathering on his pants as well as his vest and pouches is definitely a huge welcome and it really adds to the aesthetic of the figurine. The head sculpt is well detailed for its scale, and you can even tell that the painter or designer intended for the soldier to have a light stubble on his face. Not to mention how gloss paint was used for the gas mask pouch to suggest that it was made of rubber, as well as metallic paint for the parts made of metal like his belt buckle. I think the figurine is a definite must-have if you are building a diorama surrounding the ranges of D-Day, considering the importance of a BAR gunner in a squad. Like many of King & Country's releases, it is a good scaled-down representation of what it wishes to portray. Despite being discontinued, you can always try finding it on eBay. Some of King & Country's official partners may have a few leftovers in their storage or may be able to back order this figurine for you. Now I hope you've enjoyed this review and found it informative, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll do my best to deliver more of such content in the future. Thank you all for watching, and happy collecting!